Good morning. Welcome to our worship service at Broadway Presbyterian Church this fabulous morning as we celebrate the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For announcements, thank you again to all who make our worship possible. Thank you so much to Austin for your tireless efforts and your technological savvy being able to tie everything together. Uh, thank you to our lay leaders, uh, for Brooke and Angie, who are leading us today with readings. Uh, thank you for all who participate with music and sharing your gifts with us. Uh, know that we continue to pray uh, diligently for each other in this time, as we are socially distanced, but we are once again connected in a deep and meaningful way through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and through the Spirit who He sends us. Uh, next week is Pentecost. We'll be celebrating that next Sunday. A couple other announcements. Uh, number one is that the session has agreed that we're going to maintain this uh, way of worshiping together online at least until July 12th, and then we will uh, reevaluate at that point in time. But just for your planning purposes, from now until at least July 12th, we'll be meeting uh, like this. So in that, I ask that you would send uh, myself or other session members any uh, concerns or suggestions that you have for worship, anything that's going on that you feel that we could be doing better, uh, things that we could be doing differently. Whatever it is, we just feel that you should be able to voice your concerns, of course. So please email us whatever your concerns are, either as far as how worship is now or as far as moving forward. I'd also like to also put out a plea that uh, generally, on Sunday, we are reminded uh, that money is a thing by passing the plate. We are not able to do that in this situation, uh, but just know that there are still bills that need to be paid. Uh, we thank you, first of all, to those of you who have been diligently uh, giving of your financial selves to the church in this time, that you've been remembering to contribute, and some of you even more so than when we are meeting in person. And I thank you very much, and the church thanks you, and the session thanks you. Uh, very generous. Um, so thank you for that. Just a reminder for those of you who uh, maybe have been forgetting that, that, a pat, that a plate is being passed, that if you'd like to send in your contributions, you can mail them to the church, uh, which you should have that address or be able to pull it up. But if you mail it to the church, that'd be great. Uh, a couple other prayer concerns that are ongoing. Uh, John is feeling better. Um, as is Lisa, so thank you. We praise that they are getting better and they, we believe they are overcoming their sicknesses. Uh, especially John, it's been a long, long road for him. But continue prayers for their healing and for John to, to get back to where he was before. Uh, for Jody also, uh, Jody has been moved from the hospital over to, to life care. So that is a celebration as we celebrate with her and continue prayers for her healing and just that she would be, uh, just feel the spirit within her and she would feel the, the comfort of the spirit and that she'd feel the love of all of us who love her dearly in this time. So continue pray for hers. Um, continue to pray for Dot Hess's family and other family members uh, who may have passed during this time as it just makes it even more painful when people pass and we cannot be physically connected to them. So continue prayers for those individuals as well. I believe those are all the another announcements. Uh, the Presbyterian women will be meeting at a time soon, that is, uh, so they'll be able to get together. Um, I cannot think of any other announcements at this time, so I ask that we would prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this day.
please rise in body or in spirit for the call to worship. We join with the disciples who stare to the heavens at the ascension of Jesus. We join with each other and with all forerunners in the body of Christ to seek the guidance of our risen Lord. We look to see the one who is sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. The one we know, the one who came to serve, the visible image of God who reigns above us with the Godhead. We look to the one who Jesus left for guidance and direction. The Holy Spirit of God who gives us power to serve and who unites us in fellowship with the Holy Trinity. We look outward to Jesus or to God's creation. We are called to not wait, but to go and serve, to give hope to the hopeless throughout the world. Let, Let us, us worship, worship our, our God, God of, of love and, and power. power. Let us pray. O God of glory, sovereign of all nations, the risen and ascended Christ calls us to carry your message of life to all people. Lead by the power of your Holy Spirit, may we witness always to the hope to which we are called as we share Christ's love to the end of the earth. Amen. We will now sing the hymn, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He lived with us, died for us, and ascended into heaven to be with the Father. As we wait on His return, do we stare mindlessly up at heaven, waiting on Him to give us our desires? Or do we go to work in service to Him on this earth? In our sin, we often look for the handouts from God and not to how we can be the hands of Christ in our world. As we acknowledge that we are selfish creatures prone to sin, let us confess our sins to God and each other. Please join with me in our prayer of confession, which will be followed by a time of silent confession. Gracious God, we can often be like the disciples, staring up to heaven and looking for you as we yearn to have you with us and to complete your mission. However, all too often we confuse your mission with ours and we try to impose our view of the world, our mission for humanity onto you. Forgive us of our self-centered desires. You have told us to stop looking to the heavens 
that we do not need to know the time of your return, but instead we should be at work. We all too often do not work, but want to wait on you to fulfill our desires. As we look to the heavens, when we should be looking at our fellow human, forgive us our lack of motivation as we do not go to work with you and for you. Help us to partner with you to serve those we have neglected, those in need of healing, in need of care, and in need of hope. Forgive us, have mercy on us, and enable us to serve through your Spirit. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ lived with us and died for us and has gone to be with the Godhead to intercede for us and rules over us. Jesus has left us with the Spirit who guides us, teaches us, and connects us with power to serve. With all of this, how can we doubt that we have a God who loves us enough to forgive us? So believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, open our hearts and minds to your message this day. Illuminate our words for us, so that we may have a clear understanding of the time that we live in, the power that lives in us, and our responsibility to God in this time with this power. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be ever pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I will be reading from the Old Testament, Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun. Moses' assistant said, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the great Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in ordinance with all of the law that my servant Moses command you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book is the law, shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in ordinance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. Have you any room for Jesus? He who bore your load of sin, as he knocks at us to mission, sinner, will you let him in?
remember being in college and a housemate of mine realized that I didn't have really anything to play music on in my room. And he felt bad for me, I guess, because he gave me a set of computer speakers. I guess that they were his. It was really kind of him. And I put them next to my bed thinking that I would just hook them up, I would plug them in that day and I'll be able to listen to some tunes. Well, a week later he comes in and the speakers are still sitting on the floor. He's like, are you, are you going to use those? Because if you're not, it's not a big deal. Just, I'll just take them back or I'll give them to somebody else. I was like, yeah, 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 of course I will. Of course I will. I'm really, really generous. Thank you. It was really, really generous of you. Thank you very, very much for your gift. Um, I'm definitely going to hook them up and I'm really looking forward to it. But then I forgot again. And about a week later, I realized those speakers are not on my floor anymore. I guess that he had come in and taken them or given them to somebody else. I just wasn't using the gift that I've been given. In the same sort of a way, my wife has told me before that the best gift that she can receive in return for giving a gift is to see that gift put to use. As I think about that, I would imagine that God feels the same way with the gifts that God gives us. Do we put them to use? Our passage for today talks again about one of our greatest gifts, which is the gift of the Spirit. This is Acts 1, 1 through 14. It says, In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them, by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While, saying with, while staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John, the, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into the heaven, will come down in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus has been physically resurrected, and now he has spent some 40 days with the disciples. 40 is such a remarkable number in the Bible. As each time that something happens at 40 days or 40 years, number one is it's a long time. Number two, it's a generational change, or it's a change in a phase of life. It means something big has changed. Like in Genesis with the flood that restarted the whole world, it rained for 40 days, washing away the world and starting all over again. And then Moses, when he receives the law of God, he's up on the mountain for 40 days, ushering in a new age in the life of Israel as they have the law to guide them now. And the Israelites are in the desert for 40 years where they go from slavery in Egypt to freedom. 
And at the start of Jesus' ministry, he's in the desert for 40 days, fasting and praying and then being tempted by Satan. As he's about to step out into the world, Jesus, God in the flesh, transitioning into our world is marked by 40 days. Now Jesus is resurrected and he spends 40 days with his disciples. This is a big change. We should pay attention to this. Jesus has been with his disciples for three years. Then he is crucified, dead, and buried. He is now resurrected. So what does this mean? What this is, is everything new. This is a time of change marked by those 40 days. They've gone from the age of the prophets to the age of Jesus, and now the age post-resurrected Jesus. This is ushering in the end times, that time between Jesus coming in physical form to the time when he returns again, the time when he comes as a servant, to the time when he comes to rule the world. These 40 days that he spends with his disciples makes the, marks the change of something really, really big. A lot of times when big things happen in life and we see them happen, our response is, man, when I get to heaven, I got some big questions for Jesus about this. In my opinion, once we see the resurrected Lord, most of our questions will seem pretty minuscule and we'll probably forget them. But regardless, the disciples had that chance to ask Jesus a question face to face. And they did. And their question is, Jesus, is this the time where you will restore the kingdom of Israel? You see, the people believed that Jesus was supposed to restore the nation of Israel. That is what the Messiah, the Savior, the Anointed One was supposed to do. As the nation of Israel was a great nation under King David, King Solomon, kind of went downhill after that. But they want to be restored as a great nation. They've been ruled over other people from the Assyrians to the Babylonians to the Greeks to the Romans now. They want this time when Israel will be a great nation again, when they'll be free of the Romans. Well, there will come a time when this will happen, where Israel will be the great nation. When there is a new Jerusalem and a new Israel, when heaven comes down and joins with earth, then Israel will be fully restored, is how Jesus answers their question. That end of times. But the disciples, the Israelites, of course, want their nation restored now. They want to be restored. They want to be free. They want the Romans gone. The resurrection of Jesus gives them hope of this. As the redemption makes sense, I'm sure they're very glad that their sins are paid for through the blood of Christ. But it seems like they're asking, that's great, Jesus, but what about now? What about their plight right now? Because Jesus, you clearly care about people's plight while they are on earth. That is clear as you healed people and you fed people, you care for people. So you care about their plight. How about our overall plight as a people of Israel? When will you take care of that and make Israel a great nation again? Now that Jesus has shown truly who he is through the resurrection, now they yearn more for what they want to come true. Okay, Jesus, you are now resurrected. Is this when you will finish the work that you should be doing? When you will accomplish our plan for salvation? But this is clearly not God's plan, at least at this point in time. How often do we put our plan on God and claim that plan as His? How often do we think, of course this is what God wants. Of course, this is the political system that God wants or the war that God wants or the justice that God wants. How often do we name our agenda as God's and then sit there and wait for him to accomplish our wants and criticize other people for standing in the way of God's plans like we know what God is thinking? Well, Jesus gives two responses. His first response is, it's not for you to know the time or the season. You don't need to know the day and time that Israel will be restored. Jesus is clearly responding in terms of the end times. You don't need to know that. That is the Father's prerogative. It's not your place to know that. Which is the exact same answers he gave before his death and resurrection. 
But in the meantime, Jesus says, in the meantime, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus knows they want renewal of their kingdom, but he says that I have a better gift for you. I have a tremendous gift for you. So much better than computer speakers. But he tells them, stay in Jerusalem until you receive this gift. That you will receive the Spirit. So you all really should stick together in Jerusalem because you're not going to want to miss this. Which is what we talk about next week at Pentecost. But you will have power when the Spirit comes upon you. Don't worry about when Israel will be restored. Don't worry about when the end of times happen. I have a different plan for you. And then Jesus ascends into heaven. And they sit there and stare. Not really sure. The Bible seems like they weren't staring too long. But I have this picture of the disciples just kind of mindlessly staring up to heaven. Maybe trying to figure out who's going to turn away first and figure that out. But, but as they're sitting there staring up at heaven. Which must have been really shell-shocking. Right, they've already seen Jesus die and then Jesus be resurrected. Now they see him taken up into heaven into a cloud. I mean, it's like, what, is, what do you think he's going to do next? We're just going to sit here and wait and see if he's going to do another really, really cool thing. Or maybe he's going to come back right now. So maybe we'll just sit here and wait until he does come back. But two angels appear instead and they're like, why, why, why are you looking up there? He'll come back in the same way. The the angels are essentially saying, what are you looking at? Go to work. Because now as Jesus has has ascended, now the disciples and us, now we have another source of hope. Not like Jesus' resurrection hasn't given us enough hope. But now with his ascension, Jesus goes to be with the Father. He has gone to be with the Godhead, to rule at the Godhead's side. You just imagine just knowing a leader who you spent three years with, who taught and taught you and served you and loved you. Jesus spent three years with them. I mean, to know the person who rules for them, to know the one who rules the universe that personally, what a comfort and hope. In a small way, this would be like growing up with whoever the president of the United States is. Just knowing, just having that comfort of knowing that person personally. But man, to know God, to be close to God, the comfort in knowing who our ruler really is. Looking at our Old Testament passage, Joshua has a little, little foretaste of this as he's put in charge after those 40 years of Moses. After that world-changing 40-year transition period, God speaks to Joshua as he's being put in charge as they enter into the promised land. And God tells him to obey his laws. Do not turn from the law. Meditate on it. Keep the law on your lips. This was their guide at the time. Stay close to your guide. In the same way that we must follow our guide, that we must stay close to the Spirit of Christ, that we must stay close to Scripture as well. And then God told Joshua, Do not be afraid or discouraged, because I, your God, go with you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you also. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you always. This is a picture of Joshua truly knowing the God that he serves and God being close to Joshua as he walks with him and he goes to work. God is a very comforting and guiding presence for Joshua as Joshua enters into the work of leading Israel. The disciples walk with Christ for three years and Christ goes to be with the Father and leaves them the witness. What Joshua has experienced is a small foretaste of the comfort that these disciples get to know. Because to know Jesus, to know firsthand that our God, our King is that loving, is to to be the one that I know that the one who rules our universe is the same one who washed my feet. The same one who I saw heal the blind and the leper and the lame. That is who I worship and who rules my life. What comfort is it knowing that that is who our ruler is? That our ruler is that loving. But as he goes to be with God the Father, there needs to be a witness, a guide, a source of power, an ambassador, if you will, for the disciples. And one is coming. So now it is time to go to work. 
Because that witness that is coming is the fulfillment of the promise that Jesus leaves with his friends. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. The age that we are in, what those 40 days of post-resurrected Jesus means, what it leads to is the age of the Spirit of Christ being with us as our witness. It is the start of all things new. Like the 40 years in the desert or the 40 days on the mountain, the flood for 40 days, Jesus fasting for 40 days, this 40-day period makes it marks a transition into newness. It is a transition of power. Life as we know it is different now through the death and resurrection and now ascension and the leaving of the Spirit of our God. Because this gift, the giving of the Spirit, is world-changing. All relationships of power are transformed. And it's not even that the end is necessarily coming true. It might. We don't know the time. But we don't sit here and stare waiting for that to happen. And the time doesn't even matter. Through the ushering in of this new age, the worldview has changed. The methods and values for even determining someone or something's worth and significance has changed. This is a new reality. Everything is new. We are between times. From when we are held by death and evil, that now we are free from that, but we are waiting on the new age when the reign of Christ will be fully realized. But in this in-between time, we don't just sit and wait on the return of Christ. We move. Now we work as we are guided and empowered by the Spirit of Christ. The power that we have. As Jesus said, you will have power when the Spirit comes upon you. And even earlier in John, Jesus said, you will receive power in the Spirit and do even greater signs than these because Jesus goes to be with the Father. We are given a life-changing and world-changing gift. Do we use it? Do we take those speakers our friend has given us and simply plug them in? Or do they sit on the floor? Do we use the gift of the Spirit or not? And this gift is not for our own gains. That is really nothing that Jesus ever has anything to do with. Jesus says, you will receive power with the Spirit. And you will be my witnesses to the world. This power that we are given is used to transform lives. Author Dallas Willard speaks of this in his book, The Divine Conspiracy. Willard describes a life with the Spirit being akin to a person doing work. On our own, we can do very, very little. Like before the printing press where words had to be copied by hand. Then the printing press came along, how much more work could be done? On our own, we can do very, very little. But with electrical power, let alone atomic power, how much work can we do? On our own, without the Spirit, there is so little we can do. With the Spirit of God, what can we not do? God has always wanted to be in relationship with us. And it's more than fellowshipping with us, though that is a huge part of it for sure, but God wants to go to work with us. God could do all the work on His own, but that's not His plan. God wants to work with us, beside us, equip us. Think of all the work that we can do if we trust in the Spirit and use the Spirit. We are given a spirit of power that with God we can influence the world. Jesus said you will receive the Spirit and you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem, all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In Jerusalem, the holy city, you will worship to the Jewish capital, the holy center, the rest of Judah, the rest of Israel. And you will go into Samaria, which is the area that is despised by Jewish people. You will witness to Jews, you will, wish, you will witness to non-Jews, you will witness to the ends of the earth to all people. And the crazy thing is that the disciples actually do it. Philip goes to Samaria in our passage that we had two weeks ago. Then we continue this mission, this work, with the Spirit in places like Broadway, Virginia. We are given the Spirit to work with God. 
with the power of the resurrected Christ. To be witness to those in our local communities, our towns, our cities, our nation, and the world. Through the power of the Spirit, we can work with God. We can accomplish so much. We can help those who have been neglected, those who are in need of sustenance, those who need connection, those who need hope. We have the power of the Spirit with us. What can we not do? So where are we? After this world-changing period, marking where we are now in the time between the resurrected Jesus and the return of Christ, in this period where Jesus rules next to the Father, in this period where we are given the Spirit to be witnesses, where are we? Do we sit and stare up at heaven hoping Jesus will return for our own gain? Accomplish whatever vision we have for Him? Are we wasting time? Are we wasting the gift of the Spirit? As we stare up to heaven and wait, is it God's mission we have in mind? Or is it ours? Do we sit and stare or do we step out and work? Because yes, Jesus is raised and yes, He will return again, but we don't know when, so let us work while we wait. Do we take this gift and use it? Do we take those speakers and plug them in or just let them sit on the floor? As we are given tremendous power through the Spirit, do we seek the Spirit? Do we listen to the voice of Christ? Do we read the Bible with the vision that the Spirit is sitting next to us and teaching us as we read His Word? Do we have conversations with our friends thinking that the Spirit of God is our witness? Can we fathom the power that we have? God wants to be in relationship with us. Yes, He wants to fellowship with us, but He wants to fellowship with us while we work. God wants to work with us as the Spirit is a Spirit of power. So think of what we can accomplish as we go out and serve with and for the Spirit of God. Please pray with me. Loving God, we thank You for this day. We thank You for what it marks that as we remember Your ascension into heaven. We thank you that we have a ruler of our universe who we can depend on, who we know lords us out of love, leads us out of love. The same one who washed the feet of the disciples, the same one who cured the lame and the leper, is the same one who rules over our world and over our lives. And the same one who has left us with with your spirit so that we can go about doing your work. Help us to go about doing your work as we look to you for guidance. Be with us this day and always. In the precious name of Christ we pray. Amen and amen. Now please stand as you are able in body and in spirit to say what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we lift up the prayer concerns of this world. Lord, we pray for local congregations here in the Broadway area, in the greater Rockingham County area, in Harrisonburg, in the state of Virginia, in our country and around the world. We're trying to find ways to stay connected to the people that they serve. And also trying to be connected in interesting ways and in new ways to a world who needs the hands and feet of Christ now like never before. Of all congregations to think outside the box in ways that we can serve and be your hands and feet. Send us your spirit for wisdom and for guidance as we seek to serve you. Or be with members of Broadway Presbyterian Church where we lift them all up uh, in your name. 
We lift up Jody, who's now over at Life Care. We pray that you would continue to heal her body, mind, and spirit. Lay your hand of comfort on her and on all who love her, Lord. Pray for John for continued healing for him as he is, it seems to be coming around finally that you continue to give him strength. Lord, continue to be with Julie. I pray that you lift her up in your name, Lord, as we celebrate with her as well as pray for continued healing. Be with all of us, Lord. Help us to feel connected with one another. Lord, we pray for our nation's leaders, for our local leaders, for those who have just been elected, for those who have been in office, to provide all of them with wisdom and guidance and knowledge and how to, to rule, how to, how to lead us. Give them servants' hearts that they may serve and lead well. Lord, I pray for guidance as, as people are trying to start opening up different businesses which is needed for the economy and for people's jobs and well-being. But as we look to that, I pray that we would all be wise in how we do that. I'd be with those who are in pain. I pray for, for people who are afflicted by violence in this time. As there are still unspeakable amounts of, of violence and pain and injustice that happens in our world. Well, I pray that during this time we can turn to you and learn what it means to love one another. Well, I pray that you would send your spirit to this world that we may see your peace and see your love. Lord, I pray that we could be your hands and feet. I would thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for the God that you are. We we'll lift up all these things, all the prayers said and unsaid in this time, Lord. It's in the precious name of Christ we pray. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So let us go out to serve. Let us not sit and wait on Christ's return, but let us go to work. Let us love and serve those around us, so that all might know the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. This time that we live in is still the time of change as we learn from the Spirit what it means to work with the power of God, to fulfill the kingdom of God on earth. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen and amen. Go in peace to love and to serve one another.